Right, I want to turn to Jan Osthoek now, who has also been working on some more recent aspects of the tree cover of Scotland. Yes, I've been looking at the, uh, the work of the Forestry Commission in Scotland. And the Forestry Commission um, has been established in 1919 to create um, a forest um, reserve, as they call it, in Britain. Uh, most of these forests were created in, in Scotland because Scotland had most land available for forestry. And the importance of this is that one institution, the Forestry Commission, has had an enormous impact on the landscape in Scotland during the 20th century. Uh, it's been argued that there's been the single largest uh, land of change in land use in Scotland during the 20th century. Um, as Chris mentioned before, the uh, amount of, of woodland cover at the start of the, 70s, of the 20th century was very low, um, in the order of about something like 4% has been estimated. Uh, at present, it's about 17%, and most of it is due to the work of the Forestry Commission or subsidies given out to landowners by the Forestry Commission to plant trees. Mm -hmm. So, in that respect, one single organization has been very important in the way that the landscape looks today in Scotland. So you're really drawing attention to the fact that the creation of an institution, do you think it was important that it was a state institution here, gave, giving it enormous power? Uh, or, or do you think it's the, the, the form of the institution itself? It's a combination of the two. Uh, of course, politics are very important here, but mm. political decisions are very often the result of uh, developments in society as a whole. Uh, in the case of the Forestry Commission, it was actually, actually events that were taking, both that were happening uh, around the globe. I mean, a world war, the First World mm. War, um, there was a, a shortage of timber because of the um, the marine, the naval blockade by the Germans, and it was hard to import timber into Britain. And without timber, uh, mining was very difficult. And then it was realized we need to create a strategic timber reserve. Uh, and that was actually the beginning of the Forestry Commission. It was realized we need an institution to create this resource. So it was a direct response to developments in the world. But on the other hand, you also see that there are pressures from society as a whole. Uh, people wanted to see forests created, um, either for economic reasons, it brought jobs to the highlands, that was the idea, uh, as well as for um, improving the landscape and the use of the, of the land. I mean, one of the things the Forestry Commission is always identified with in, in popular eyes is, is the conifer monoculture. I mean, do you feel that's a, a, a legitimate accusation almost nowadays, isn't it? Um, it seems a legitimate ac accusation. If you look at the blocks of conifers planted in the landscape, mm. uh, they're all monocultures. It's not very nice to look, look at the geometric patterns uh, thrown on hillsides. But that's not entirely fair, I think, because when they were created, that was seen as a good thing. It was mm. indeed, as I said before, bringing jobs, but it was also seen as improving the use of the landscape, mm. because the ground where they were planted was poor land, and the idea was you can't do much with it. So if you want to make them productive, um, the best thing to do is plant forest there, plant trees. Uh, but it was also seen as, as a means of beautifying the landscape. It was not necessarily seen as something that was negative. Um, I think this ethic is, goes back to the 19th century, when uh, Scottish landowners started to introduce uh, tree species from abroad, because most of these yeah. conifer plantations are what we call alien species, yeah. especially trees that came from North America. Um, and in the 19th century, well, there was a big planting craze. Um, and it was mainly done, well, it was done for two reasons. To uh, beautify the estates of the large landowners in, in Scotland, but also to make more money out of yeah. their estates, yeah. wood production. So, and that carried over into the 20th century and influenced the work of the Forestry Commission. So you think it's a bit unfair to dismiss this as a sort of a fashion, which has now gone out of fashion. There's something more to it than that, is there? Uh, there is more to it, because I think that after the Second World War, you can clearly see that a hard economic uh, ethic is coming on board uh, with 
um, a kind of large scale Canadian style forestry with the coming of, of deep plowing on a large scale, the use of mm -hmm. fertilizer, a really kind of almost industrial um, scale forestry which is very mechanical mm. and I think that is what people objected to that it became so artificial really became kind of um, creating another crop uh, and treating it as, as an agricultural crop like grain yeah. uh, you plant the trees you grow them as quickly as possible and then you harvest them and I think that's what people objected to. So it's the changing nature of the forestry as well as the changing values. I, th which, I think that's very which, much Which are here. Yeah. That's interesting because you, you've, you've built up quite a nice periodization for us coming from the, you know, the uh, aristocratic uh, estates through to the first period and then the, 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 the post-war period of, of forestry, yeah. uh, which is there. And it also links into Christopher's sense of changing values and what society is is demanding mm. um, from their institutions yes. and their environment, I think. And that's constantly changing, even yeah. today. Yeah, um. yeah. Good. Thanks, Jan. Yeah. That's great.